There it is right there. The world on high. I'm built. That's what it is. Right behind the sun the whole time. So I'm, I'm focusing on my dogs. I'm focusing on my birds to let you know there's some real footage. Focusing on my other birds. You know. And then back to the sky. And what you see is the sun don't have a shadow, fool. It don't have a shadow. That's that's the world on high. That is the uh, what they call Planet X, Nibiru, the New Jerusalem, uh, Wormwood, you name it. You know exactly what it is. Oh, I ain't done yet because now this is my night vision camera. And this is what I'm seeing in my night vision camera. No, there is no new uh, uh, lens flare at night. That's a planet that you're seeing right next to the moon. And this, this is the new world. This is the world on high being unveiled. When you see the world on high being unveiled, you are in the end time. I'm shaking the camera to let you know that that is no way possible. That's a news flare. Waving my hand in front of it. You can see my red light flashing it. There's uh, two planets. And then you see this thing is rotating around the moon. This is the moon. So it's planets by the moon. And it's, it's a planet behind the sun. If you can look closely, you can see two planets in there. One more vivid and one more... Uh, uh, and, and look how large this is. They're, they're all coming down. And, and, and you have reached the end. You know, and I don't know how you guys keep uh, playing about in this world. Trying to get fame. Trying to get money. Trying to get this. Trying to get that. See, it, it moved right into there. So if you look close, it's moving. You know. It moved into it, so it moved out of view right there. You know, after a while, you can see it. It's right next. It's right, right in the moon now, like moving across the moon, right in front of it. I'm still not done. See right there. Now let's darken it. You know what you see? Planets. And you see it's something that's out of this universe. It's moving. It's not like this universe. It's straight out of uh, a, a, a flick that you you like. You can't describe it. This is coming near, and like the Bible said. Men's heart will fill them, and then, like the Quran said, the hearts is going to come right up to the throat and choke them, choke them when they when they figure out what the heck is going on when they actually see it. Mass suicide. That's what's going to happen. And uh, mass hysteria, crashes, food shortages. I quit work. All of it. One of the biggest mistakes people make is letting the government tell you what that is, as if another man know what that is. Except for God, He knows what that is. Because he's the one who, who creates everything. So if you're looking at one sun over here and another sun over there. The sun don't have a re reflection fool. It don't. Don't let them say oh it's an aurora. It's this and that. This an aurora too. Huh? That's an aurora. You know. Is that one? It's clearly one planet far away. And another planet far away. W what about over there? The sun is making a reflection over there. Down there. See, it's, it's one sun, two suns. Actually take the time to look at your sunset. Notice that your sun is in the wrong place. Notice that your time is up, fool. And these people is playing around. Don't you know what's getting ready to go down? We're getting ready to go through World War III right now. Armageddon is going down. They're all over there in the position. Just like the Bible said. Just like all of the books say. Gog and Magog War. Armageddon. Whatever you want to call it. It is going down. And you see these plants. You see everything. And, and, and you still continuing the sin as if you don't see it. You're going to hell. Just like I said, for no forgery, most of this, this is my backyard. It's film. You know what that is in it? That's red iron oxide. That's coming from that planet that's coming down. That planet is hell. And, and it's right there. You know, it, 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 you can see it. And then you know what this is? This is a ship, a spaceship that's coming right out of the sky, right over my backyard. Right over my backyard and see if something's going to shoot out, out of the middle of it. You know, that, that's not from here. And, and we know it ain't from here. And, and there's more. Here's another day. When you want to see it, you can see it. When, when you want to see it, you can see it. You see that dark line? That The sun don't make dark lines behind itself. That is another planet behind there when you want to see it. You know, and this is darkened up. You can see it. You see those chemtrails? You say, oh, those ain't clouds. That is how much efforts and money that these governments is using. That's why they're going uh, belly up, collapsing. That's why the stock market and everything is going down. They're spending trillions and trillions of dollars to try to hide God. Try to hide his planets. To try to hide the truth. You know.
and then uh, let's go into a space see uh, um, every view every angle so there is no denial about it you know what it is and yeah I know what's coming with next uh did the did, did, uh, did the cracker say it did the white man say it uh, did the white man tell us I mean come on you guys are so in y'all wild intoxication of crime and sin in this world and investing in things that are, are fruitless you know you ain't gonna get anything in the hereafter but hellfire you know you, you what good is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul yeah the white man said it and I'm gonna let you hear him say it but today scientists from the California Institute of Technology have announced that they finally have solid evidence for a planet X a true ninth planet on the edge of our solar system. It is believed to be far beyond the orbit of Pluto, roughly the size of Neptune, with a mass ten times that of Earth. There are things out there, little icy objects, that are uh, orbiting in a funny way, and nobody was quite sure why. It seemed like there might be something with gravity pulling on them, but nobody quite understood. And finally, these scientists that you talked about uh, took a really hard look at it, did simulations, calculations, and they came up with the explanation, it probably is this giant planet. I, I think I read somewhere it orbits the sun every 10,000 to 20,000 years. Right. Uh, is that why no one has seen it to this no, point? No, that's not why. It's because it's so dim. It's, it's so far away that even though it's big, it's very, very dim and it'll be very tough to spot with a telescope. This world and these people is killing me to how dumb they are. It's red iron oxide. The, the, the Quran says when the sky turns red like ointment and the world on high is unveiled, and it is, then draws, then comes the end, then comes the war. It's all going down. You know they over there in Syria, all of Armageddon, all the nations, and you know they're getting ready to fight against Israel, uh, and, and not only Israel, but Americans as well. You know the bombs is coming over here. You know what's happening. You know, you, you, you see what's going on. You know this red iron oxide, all these, uh, uh, what they call diabetes and all that is increasing and heart attacks and strokes and all that. That is what this is called. Look up iron oxide. Look at, look at the, look up the effects of iron oxide. You know, why they trying to say it was a medical condition because of the food that you're eating. Bad, poor diet and, and lack of exercise. No. Look, look at the extent that the devil is hiding the end because if you knew it was the end, and I do mean the end. We only have like, if we got days left, and I do mean that. If we got days left, we're doing good. You know, and I can't warn people. And like they said, when, when you try to warn people, they say, oh, it's a hoax. This is all a hoax. We making this up. I'll make the sky red like this. I'm making those planets come. I'm making moons appear in the night. No, I ain't doing that. You know that this never existed before, and you know your end is nigh. In this video right here, this is the effects of this planet drawn there. It has, uh, 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 what do you call it, magnetic field. And as it draws near, the magnetic field, wham, there you go. The magnetic field is, is pulling. It, see, the cars is metal. The people ain't. Now watch, watch. When, when they're in the magnetic field, look at on the other side of the street, too. They, just in that little area, if the magnetic field pull hard right there, bam, there you go. You know, and, and people have no idea what's going down. What's going down is when that magnetic hit, field hit Earth, earthquakes, uh, everything going to go down at one time. And it is going to go down fast and it's going to go down hard. And I'm preparing for it. You know, we preparing for it. Uh, bomb shelter, food, water, uh, uh, different electricity like solar and wind, wind power and, and everything that we can do. Uh, stocking up food and what you doing? What you doing? That, that's the case. This is, a, this is a warning going out for the people, you know. Uh, a lion awaits in the thicket. Like it says, the Gentile destroyer has arrived. What is Gentile destroyer? It's a Gentile destroyer to destroy Pegawis, Caucasians. They were meant to be destroyed. Read your Bible. And, and type in Google search, the Gentile destroyer. Put, put Bible and Gentile destroyer, and you'll find it. But anyway, so like I said, our time is nigh. You know, and hopefully you heed this warning and get you and your family together. Uh, it's going down. It ain't going to be. The, the, Donald Trump is not going to be president. All this shit is going to end before Donald Trump. It's going to end. You know, and I'm 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 warning. This is my last warning. And you know, hopefully, uh, I, I don't warn no more because we ain't got no time. We out of time. So I would advise you and your family to get ready and prepare to meet God.
for you and your entire family to prepare to meet God. That's it. You know, you have been warned. NASA tells us that a major impact event is not a matter of if, but when. And when it happens, it could spell the end of life as we know it. So with that in mind, we're going to take a look at current fireball activity. And what it's telling us is that when could be a little sooner than later. Looking out into the vastness of the universe, the greatest mystery is right here. Right under our feet. The ultimate aim of all science to penetrate the unknown. These are the stories that will make you say, What the fuck? In Science 13, we looked at an alarming trend for fireballs. And frankly, that trend is continuing. We're going to show that with our update in this program. But first, I want to take a moment to talk about the article J.P. Jones published in 2015. In April 2015, J.P. Jones and I chose two data sets, Earthquakes and Fireballs, to reevaluate the Mayan calendar. Our findings were published in May 2015 in an article titled, Were the Mayans Using Anunnaki Knowledge? Since then, our focus has been on fireballs as the harbingers of bigger things to come. Given that a major impact event can have dire global consequences. Both the earthquakes and fireballs datasets presented in our May 2015 article showed dramatic and troubling upticks in the number of post-December 21, 2012 events. Here you see the monthly fireball trends for the years 2011, 2012, and 2013. Our data source for fireball sightings is the American Meteor Society website. The AMS was founded in 1911. To learn more about them, visit amsmeteors.org. In signs number 13, we presented trends for fireballs through November 2016. In this installment of our signs series, we'll show the following fireball data sets for the period November 2016 through February 2017. Monthly total fireballs multi-state fireballs, and huge event fireballs. So let's begin with monthly total fireballs. We begin with the data set for monthly total fireballs for November 2016 as reported in signs number 13. Let's pause for a moment just to study the color code here because we use this scheme throughout our data set. 2013 is shown in yellow, 2014 in blue, 2015 in red, and 2016 in brown. Now let's look at the most current data. Here we see that the AMS monthly total fireballs for December 2016 is clearly the highest level for the past four years. This uptick is seen again in January of this year. Please note that 2017 data is shown in black. What is clearly obvious is that January 2017 has the highest level of fireball sightings than the same month for the previous four years. Here we see the month February 2017 and there's just a very slight dip over the same month last year. Not enough to be statistically relevant. Now let's take a look at multi-state fireball sightings. Multi-state fireballs, as the name implies, are reported by observers in multiple states, provinces, or even across national boundaries in one or more countries. 
as we can see here the trend for multi-state fireballs is for the most part consistent with the total number of fireballs per month we saw previously. What we find noteworthy here is that November 2015 and 2016 represent the two highest periods in this slide for the years 2013 through November 2016. Then in December 2016 we see a substantial increase over the same month for the previous three years. However, in January of this year, the number of multi-state fireballs dropped slightly to the same level as January 2014. However, in February 2014, we see a resumption of this relentless uptick pattern because February 2017 evidenced the highest level of fireball sightings than the same month for the previous four years. With that, let's see if the same trend appears with huge event fireballs. When a fireball has been reported by over 100 observers, it is large enough to be classified as a huge event fireball. Here we see that the number of huge event fireballs for 2016 are cumulatively higher than the previous three years. But interestingly enough, in December 2016, the number of huge event fireballs is significantly less. Then, as we move into January 2017, we see that the number of huge event fireballs is at the third highest level for this same month for the previous four years. Interestingly enough, as of the month of February, we see the number of huge events dropping back down to the same level as the previous month. However, when we compare this with the number of all huge event fireballs for all months and all years, we begin to see an average baseline of two events per month. But to put this in perspective, let's take a look at a historical analysis. This simple bar chart shows us the total number of fireballs reported each year for the period January 2016 to December 2016. And this chart is visually striking. In 2009, we're looking at approximately 600 observation reports for the year. And that is the complete year. But when we look at 2016, we see approximately 5,300 fireball reports for all 12 months of that year. In other words, when we compare 2009 to 2016, we see an increase of approximately 883% in the total fireballs reported each month. Now let's see what happens when we factor in January 2017. Once again, the simple bar chart is visually striking. In 2009, we're looking at approximately 600 observation reports for all 12 months of that year. And for the single month of January 2017, we're seeing approximately 300 observation reports. In other words, that January 2017, and mind you, that's just one month, there were half as many observation reports as there were for the entire 12 months of 2009. So what happened for the year 2017 as of the month of February? The number of observation reports doubled. In other words, there were the same number of observation reports for the first two months of 2017 as there were for the entire 12 months of 2009. That is 100% of 
all of 2009 in just the first two months of 2017. And this brings us all the way back to the question, was the Mayan prophecy for 2012 a harbinger? And if so, is that harbinger coming to pass as J.P. Jones of Yowza.com maintains in his May 2015 article titled, Were the Mayans Using Anunnaki Knowledge? As we saw previously, the upward trend for monthly fireball observation reports from January 2009 to December 2012 shows a steady increase. One that gives us a simple message. That December 21, 2012 was not a non-event as naysayers maintain, but rather that it was the day when a celestial harbinger alignment occurred as per the Mayan prophecy. And if you have any doubts about that, let's take a look at huge events since December 21, 2012. Here we see the chart with approximately six huge fireball events in 2012. And as we saw earlier, a huge fireball event is one where there are over 100 observation reports. Here we see a line chart for the period January 2012 through to December 2016. What this historical analysis shows is the difference between the total number of huge fireball events for the years 2012 and 2016. When the two years are compared, we see an overall increase of approximately 533%. Ladies and gentlemen, what you've just seen is empirical data. Hard, scientific evidence you can take to the bank and it tells us that the risk has never been higher for a major impact event. One that could end life as we know it on this planet. This is why I'm deeply concerned by new asteroid research information that has just come to light. On the 19th of February of this year, three prominent UK scientists, Clemens Rumpf, Hugh Lewis, and Peter Atkinson, published a paper titled Population Vulnerability Models for Asteroid Impact Risk Assessment. In the abstract on page 2, they identified the following seven lethal effects. Strong winds, overpressure, shock wave, thermal radiation, seismic shaking, ejecta, deposition, cratering, and tsunamis. Of the seven, the one that really caught my eye was overpressure shockwave, and here's what I found. On page 7, under the heading High Winds and Overpressure, they say, During an airburst or impact, the asteroid deposits its energy in an explosion-like event that produces an aerodynamic shockwave, resulting in a tornado-like wind gust and overpressure peak. So, what does that mean to us humans? On page 8, they describe the lethal aspects. With overpressure, the danger for human beings is damage to our internal organs. With wind comes the dangers of dislocation of bodies or objects. Let's keep in mind what happened on February 15, 2013, when the Chelyablinsk meteor detonated in the skies over Russia. As a result of that detonation, overpressure and winds injured 1,500 people and damaged 7,200 buildings. Why? Because when the Chelyablinsk meteor detonated, it released as much energy as 30 Hiroshima atomic bombs and was 30 times brighter than the Sun. 
It is why I call it a 30-30 event. Simply put, folks, if this ever-increasing fireball trend that began building after December 21, 2012 does not abate, the chance of a major impact event will be higher than ever. When it does happen, there's not going to be any time for crossing that bridge when you come to it. Rather, you'll be alive on one side of the bridge or dead on the other. And I'll leave it on that note. So until the next time we meet, remember Marshall's motto. Destiny comes to those who listen and fate finds the rest. So learn what you can learn, do what you can do, and never give up hope. This is Marshall, and I'll catch you on the backside.